They reflect quality. In Singapore, they don't even have a number five in the school. But three, that's it, they're done. What's interesting about the US system is that the difference between number one and number 25 is tiny. The difference between number 25 and number 50 is just as small. There is a huge list of extremely high quality colleges and universities in the United States that are not in the top 20 in the university rankings. And what's interesting is like, Rice is a school that has really peculiar name recognition. In some places it's known really well, and in some places no one has ever heard of it. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Rice. But if you look at this list, if you're interested in studying math and science, and you're going to go by SAT scores, you will have the strongest peer group up here if you go to Rice. They're not in the top five. And yet, look at them. In the math score, they dominate. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about those points, but still. And I mentioned earlier that we have to take the academic credentials and the applicants from all these different systems and all these different pedagogies, and we have to put them on a scale. And every school has a scale. It tells us a one to seven point scale, or one is the best, and seven is the worst. But there are other schools that do seven point scales, where seven is the best, and one is the worst. And there are schools that have 10 point scales, 25 point scales, 100 point scales, and every school has their own scale. That's not the point. Every single one of those scales will boil down to essentially four categories, and these are the four categories. Outstanding, competitive, viable, and needs content. Outstanding are the candidates that are stronger than typical would be. These are the candidates that a school is going to really, really want to take just because of how powerful they are academically. Viable candidates are where schools tend to do the greatest number of work. It's where they have the largest number of admits, but also, counterintuitively, the largest number of denies. So you have good odds of getting into schools where you're viable, or not viable, competitive, you can be competitive. Good odds of getting into those schools, but it's not guaranteed. Viable are the schools that you are weaker than the average admit, and you either need to represent an institutional priority or you need to give a school a really good reason to take you over someone else that has better numbers. So the way this breaks down, do you guys know what a safety school is? The term you know. Students that are safety schools, like the places where you are applying and as a safety school, those are the schools that will consider you outstanding. So this is our view on those categories, safety, target, I made these terms up. So it's not like you can call an FIU and be like, I'm not going to be academically outstanding because they will not know what you're talking about. But it is a really useful way to think about this. And the group that needs context, this is the group whose applications don't show that a student is capable of coming to my school and graduating on time. These are the applicants where I'm not sure they have the academic chops to be able to be successful in my environment. And the reason that this category is called need context is because sometimes in those applications, you can find an explanation for why the numbers are off. And that explanation changes the way you view that application and it lets you bump back up to viable. And there can be a lot of things that fall in context. You know, you've only been in English medium school for the last year and a half, and that's why your SAT scores in the English section are so low. You know, you um, had a really serious medical you know, incident in your second year of high school or you know, second to last year of high school. And as a result, you were out of school for four months, and that's why your grades are so low. Or your parents lost their job, and you had to go out and get work, and so you're working 30 hours a week after school, and that's why your grades are bad. Most of the time, I don't find that. Most of the time, that context isn't there. But sometimes it is, and you can bump those students back up. And for those of you who want to see what this looks like graphically, I like graphs. We're going to make you subscribe to Tumblr, Heidelberg charts. Above that log, I genuinely do hard charts. And um, so this is, this is not Tufts. This is a, some school in the United States and a, a high school in Maryland. This is their statistics. So these are students that represent outstanding. You know, they are over that middle line for the admits, right? The blue line where it sets at the middle point for the admits. So the students that are at the top of that by you know, access is SAT and GPA, SAT and grades. Those are the students who are outstanding. The students who are competitive will fall in here. You know, these are the candidates who sometimes get admitted and sometimes get denied. The group that's viable is in here. You know, some admissions officer either found a really compelling reason to advocate for that student or they represented an important, important institutional priority. And the group that needs context would be you know, the outliers all the way on the right, that one kid who's got you know, a 
740 combined in the 1600s. I don't know how that happened. It's like only 300 points above the minimum score, but whatever. And here's how those four categories break down at Tufts. This is the slide that nobody in my office says I'm going. I can really imagine because nobody knows what the hell I'm doing. Um, <laughs> hey, stuff. So, this is the number of applications that we had in each of these categories and the percent of the applicant pool that this represents. So, the number of students that fell into the category of academically outstanding was just a little bit more than 10%. The group that was competitive was a little bit less than half. The group that was viable was a little less than a third. Oops, I don't know how you did that. And the group that needs contact less than 10%. This, by the way, is really long. Um, at schools that are more selective than Tufts, there are very few of them who fall into this category. But for those of you who are really excited about getting into Harvard, or more likely, those of you who are really excited about your kids getting into Harvard, you should know that the group of students that falls into the outstanding band is literally zero. And in schools that are less selective than us, but still fairly selective, you know, you'll see a little bit more spread where the group that looks viable and the group that looks at the end is close to even. But this is pretty difficult, that the, the vast majority of applicants fall into the competitive band, and that only 10% of our applicant pool is a group that you can knock out based on academic. This is normal. At most selective institutions, the group that falls into that needs to have a context category is only between 5 and 15% of the applicant. That's it. Everybody else is capable of doing the work. So this is encouraging in some ways because it means that it's extremely unlikely that someone strikes you from the list because your ID scores aren't high. Or your SAT score, right? But it also means that no one else is getting struck from that list because their ID scores aren't high. Which is simultaneously encouraging and terrifying. And there is a direct correlation between the academic strength and the admit rate. Our strongest academic category had an almost 60% admit rate and the lowest viable category just 3%. That's a huge swim. But what I don't want you to miss is that to be in the highest outstanding category at Tufts, and again, we are not the most selective school in the United States, although we are certainly one of them. In that category, you have to have a 2300 plus and essentially straight A's or a 44-45 on the ID. You need to be perfect to fall into that category. And we are still denying four out of every ten students who have academically perfect records. And in the case study, you're going to see why. So hopefully that's also terrifying and encouraging. Because <laughs> here comes the case study. Uh, over there. Are you pumped to go? Um, if you have a pen and paper, this is a really good time to take it out and take some notes. Um, I'm going to outline for you the rules of our case study. So here's how this is going to work. There are six applicants, and I'm going to present them to you in three rounds. In the first round, I'm going to show you their academic records, nothing else. I'm going to give you only their academics, and you're going to pick two. In the second round, I'm going to show you their BC their extracurriculars, or CCAs, depending on the language of instruction in school. And then I'm going to ask you to combine the extracurriculars and the academics. This is why you need to take notes. You're going to combine those two pieces, and you're going to vote on how those two pieces fit together, and you are going to again pick two. And you can change your vote. In the third round, I'm going to show you everything else. Where they went to school, where they live, their parents' background, what they want to study, what they wrote about in their applications, what their teachers said about them in their racks. I'm going to show you all the rest of it. And then after you've seen the full picture of who they are, you're going to again pick two using everything from the bottom. You ready? Do you have questions about this? Do you questions about anything that we've already done? No, okay, good. Round one, data. The numbers. For those of you who believe that admissions is all about the numbers, this is the round for you. <laughs> you're looking for grades. You're looking for SAT scores. For simplicity, just to keep this kind of basic, you 
can assume that all these students are taking approximately the same level of rigor in their courses. And all of these candidates fall into the competitive band. Every single one of the six I'm about to show you fall into that middle group. And you will vote, again, for two. So here it is, data. Number one is Connor. 3.07, that is just a little bit better than B, average. 780, 670, 630, SAT 2 in literature. Jillian with a 3.67, that's an A minus. Her SAT scores. Lissette with a 3.56, that's just a little bit better than the split between the A minus and the B plus. Ethan with a 388, that's a really solid A. Julie with a 396, that's a really solid A. And Ying with a 4.0. Here's what you're looking for. 
Special talents, leadership potential, large